Ahoy Bashikni, it's Jen from Dream Prague. Do you remember when you were a kid and January finally came and your parents took down the Christmas tree and the lights and all the decorations and you were left with nothing but a big, sad, empty hole in your living room and your heart? Imagine that, but it's also zero degrees outside and dark all the time. This is essentially what January is like in Prague. Also, have you noticed that all of the trams get kind of louder in the winter? It's like every time they go around a corner, it's like If you live there, you know what I'm talking about. So for you vitamin D addicts out there like me, who find yourself without a tan or any reason to go on, today we're gonna make some Czech Kulida. It will get you through the dark times. Kulida is a traditional Czech soup with mushrooms and potatoes and lots of dill. And trust me, it's exactly what you need during these winter months. And because you probably didn't click on this video to learn Czech cooking from an American, I've brought in a small panel of experts. Petra and her son Hansa are the authors of Cook Like Czechs, a English language Czech cooking blog born during the pandemic. Petra found herself cooking nonstop for her two sons who were at home all the time due to the lockdown. And so she challenged her son Hansa to translate all of her Czech recipes into English for an international audience. I made a, made, made a deal uh, with my son that I will uh, cook, uh, I will uh, write the recipe down and he will translate it in uh, English. My Hansa had requested that I cook him some kulida. In search of a recipe, I stumbled on Cook Like Czechs. I do like to seek out Czech language recipe blogs to practice my Czech, but it was a welcome relief to find Cook Like Czechs, which was written in excellent English and has beautiful demonstrative photographs, so you know what you're doing step by step. Kulida soup is perfect for uh, cold winter months. It's mm. perfect. Really, it's uh, seriously uh, one of the best soups uh, you can make. Cold winter months, did you say? Check. Let's get started. Because we had already eaten all of the mushrooms that we picked in the Croconoche Mountains back in September, I bought some dried mushrooms at the farmer's market at Tilaku near Ipe Pavlova. Although the recipe calls for dried mushrooms, it also tells you how you can use fresh mushrooms if you'd like. I'll add a few handfuls of mushrooms to a pot and cover with two cups of water. Now the water amount is important because we'll be adding it to the soup later. Bring it to a boil and then let it simmer for 15 minutes. Next we'll make the roux, which is a fancy way of creating a thicker base for the soup. Heat butter in a pot and as it bubbles, you slowly add the flour, mixing all the while until the flour is incorporated. and you get this nice, thick paste. As Hansa writes beautifully, it will create a bubbling mass. Then we'll add the beef broth, one half cup at a time. By adding it slowly, you're preventing the clumps of the roux from forming. I'm sure you could replace the beef broth with chicken or vegetable broth if you preferred, just don't tell any checks. Now we remove the mushrooms from the mushroom broth and add that broth to the beef broth and brew. Bring it to a boil and then reduce it to minimum heat. Cover with a lid and let simmer for 10 minutes. Next, the potatoes. We're gonna cut them into half inch pieces. By the way, I love that Petra and Hansa add American measurements to their blog, very helpful. While I'm cutting, 
a potato tangent. I heard a story, I'm not sure if it's true. It's about the origin of potatoes in Bohemia. Potatoes, of course, come from South America and they were imported by the Spaniards in the 16th century to Spain and also to their ports in Ireland. In the mid 17th century, what is now the Hybernska Divadlo um, used to be a Franciscan monastery and there were Irish monks who lived there. Hibernia is actually the Latin word for Ireland. And in the 18th century, those Irish monks reportedly imported the potatoes from Ireland into Bohemia and planted them in the monastery's garden. This story might be apocryphal, but I love the idea of the Irish, my people, being the first ones to bring such a staple of Czech cuisine into Bohemia, right into the center of Prague. Now we'll put the chopped potatoes and the mushrooms into the soup. Simmer for another 15 minutes until the potato cubes are soft. Next, we'll chop the dill. I personally am ambivalent about dill. It seems like a lovely herb, but Czechs seem to have very strong opinions for or against it, particularly when it comes to potato salad. I'm not getting involved. You guys duke it out in the comments. But kulaida is most definitely a soup for dill lovers. Chop a handful of fresh dill and set it aside. Now we'll remove the soup from the heat and add some magic. Cream and vinegar, pepper and salt. And sugar. According to Cook Like Checks, you'll wanna put the dill on at the very end because the longer it cooks, the more it loses its greenness and its flavor. Lastly, they suggest serving the soup with a hard boiled egg on top. And if you're feeling fancy, which I always am, you can add a poached egg instead. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. That's a mess. Round two. <laughs> that one ought to do it. I love the idea of a mother-son cooking blog. It reminds me of when I used to cook with my mother when I was young. And of course, I love that Hansa is perfecting his culinary English and at the same time learning a very valuable skill. Do you cook with Hansa and with your other son? Do they like to cook? <laughs> yeah, they, they are both uh, totally different. Uh, fortunately, uh, Hansa, uh, my other son, uh, he cooks from time to time, uh, simply dishes. I like to bake. Yeah. Ah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, some typical Czech pastries, uh, he's able uh, to cook, to bake. It's, uh, I think it's a good start uh, for the future. <laughs> Someone in America who is mm -hmm. watching the video who wants to try Czech cooking, what is uh -huh. a good recipe on your website to start with? Mm -hmm. Uh, I would say for sweet uh, variation or variant, uh, I can uh, suggest uh, noodles markem. Noodles <laughs> noodles, no, noodles with poppy seed. It's, uh, I think it's tasty. Uh, and for people who uh, prefer uh, salty dishes, uh, I would suggest uh, check uh, potato pan pan pancakes, bramboraki. If you know, plenty of bramboraki, plenty of garlic and majoranka. And it's a typical Czech spice, uh, which makes uh, a dish uh, a really Czech thing. They are very, very, uh, very, very tasty. Naturally, dishes from this country vary from region to region. So I wanted to know about this specific region near Liberec, where Hansa and Petra live. The closest I would say is in Krkonoši, that's a I, about like 50 kilometers to the east will be Kiselo. Mm -hmm. or... It's yeah, it's it's it, it's it's true. It's a soup too. Mm -hmm. uh, in Krkonoše, my uh, dad is coming from Kr Krkonoše. Krkonoše, giant mountains. Mm -hmm. You know, oh. 
Yes, mm -hmm. yes, I have been there many times. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it's it's a, a really nice, a very nice region for 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 me too, uh, and uh, a, a soup. Uh, which my dad uh, made very often when I was a child. Uh, it was Krkonošské uh, kyselo. I'll put all the links to the recipes mentioned in the description box below. And if you are hankering for some filling, authentic Czech recipes, be sure to check out Cook Like Czechs. And thank you to Petra and Hansa for sharing your recipes with us today. Thanks for watching. Uvidíme se příští týden. Ahoj. Grazie, mama. <laughs> Ani když děkuju. Tadičko. Uh. Yummy. Oh, this is perfect. Perfect for winter. Nice. Mm. Holy cow. Yeah. Oh my god. It's so freaking good. It's so freaking good, and it's so easy. It's so good. Done. Done.